Yep, you read the title of the video right. I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily call Soul Plane a classic movie. I don't even think it's a, it's a cult classic movie. I think it's just, I think it's just an old movie. Um, it's kind of a relic from the uh, the mid early two thousands. Um, it stars uh, Snoop Dogg. Uh, Soul Plane was directed by Jesse Terrio. Uh, he's a music video director primarily. He's done videos for Bad Bunny, uh, Jennifer Lopez, Pitbull, uh, Daddy Yankee, a whole lot of uh, R&B, uh, reggaeton uh, type artists. Uh, it stars Kevin Hart, uh, Method Man, Snoop Dogg, uh, Monique, uh, has Tom Arnold, Terry Crews. Um, yeah, Gary Anthony Williams, the late great John Witherspoon, rest in peace. Yeah, uh, Soul Plane is a very fascinating movie. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily hilarious or not. I think there are some funny moments in Soul Plane. I think three performances do kind of stand out. Uh, Kevin Hart. This is one of those movies, this is before Kevin Hart truly, like, rose to being Kevin Hart, the megastar that he is now. Um, people kind of forget Kevin Hart kind of had two waves of uh, blowing up and becoming famous. It was first kind of at the turn of the century um, with his uh, with his role in Paper Soldiers, and that kind of led him, he even had his own house, I think it was called, like the Big House or Big Part of the House or something like that. I think Faze on Love was on it. Um, I think Keith David was on it too, but it got canceled after a few episodes. Uh, that eventually led him to getting into Scary Movie 3, 4, and then that wrote he wrote that wave to blow up and become who he is today really starting in 2008 with I'm a grown little man this movie actually did help him a little bit uh Kevin Hart does talk about how the movie did help him it kind of gave him more of a that uh underground kind of national audience and that's what allowed him to, to tour um but yeah this is this ain't it he does a good job in this role i think it's one of even, you know, the movie isn't that good. I think this is one of his strongest performances as a lead actor. Um, he, he plays his role really well. Uh, Snoop Dogg as Captain Mac. And honestly, for this review, I'm not going to say their character names. It, it, it doesn't matter. Um, Snoop Dogg, he's the captain, and he's hilarious in this movie. Uh, Godfrey, comedian Godfrey, he's funny as uh, as the co-pilot. Uh, D.L. Hughley is also one of the standout performances. He stars, um, he's not a star, he plays the uh, the bathroom attendant. He's really funny, has a, a few funny interactions with uh, Brian Hooks and some more, and Tom Arnold, and with uh, John Witherspoon as well, who plays a blind man. Uh, Witherspoon, you know, rest in peace to John Witherspoon. We lost a comedy legend last year. Uh, he he does a, he, he plays a good job. He does a good bit in here. Uh, Sofia Vergara is also in this movie. This is one of the first things that I remember seeing her in. I remember seeing her in this, and then she was in uh, the Tyler Perry movie version of Meet the Browns. And then after a while, that's when uh, she got into uh, Modern Family a few years after that. So this really did help her uh, blow up a little bit and kind of get some fame. Uh, Gary Anthony Williams, always a fun character actor, voice actor. Um, Monique is in this movie as well, future Academy Award winner. Lonnie Love is in this movie, uh, future Emmy winner as one of the hosts of The Talk. So... From what you see in the movie, there's a lot of either good acting talent or a, good, a lot of good comedic talent in this movie. So why didn't the movie work? And it's simple. It's bad. It's a bad script. This is not really a good movie. The script is not good at all. Uh, it, it's really cliche. It's basically a lot of stereotypes, like um, there's stereotypes for black people. There's, you know, this is three years after 9-11, so, of course, there was a little uh, terrorist Muslim stereotype. Uh, there's some gay stereotypes. Uh, even though Gary Anthony Williams does a good job, uh, he plays a stereotypical extra flamboyant gay man. Um, yeah, it's, you know, it, it's a fascinating movie. Uh, Boondocks. Loved making fun of this movie. Um, I, I don't know if I would recommend this movie. I think I kind of would, maybe. Like, I, I've got mixed feelings about it. It's a little, 
it's almost like how I feel about Sonic, but kind of in the reverse. Like, I know it's a bad movie, and I know I'm, I probably shouldn't be recommending it, but I do think if you're a big fan of Kevin Hart, if you haven't seen this, I don't know how, you probably should see it just as for, like, completionist sake. Um, it's it's a relic of the mid-2000s. Uh, a lot of the music is from that period, too. You got Lil John and the East Side Boys. You got uh, some Chingy in there. You got uh, Jaquan with uh, Tipsy. Um, and so the the style, the fashions, it's fun looking at the at movies like this that do take you back to a different period of time that you did live through, like older movies from like the seventies and stuff. I have no connection to it, but I for sure have a connection to the way people dressed, talked, um, the the music that that was going on, and so I like you know the the little time cap. So I think I think it was fun. Um, yeah, it's it's just one of those things. Oh, Terry Crews also in this movie. Terry Crews, who's gone on to star in uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine, Everybody Hates Chris, a bunch of other stuff. Like, there's talent in this movie, and at a certain point, every pretty much everyone would be a bigger star. Um, D.L. Hughley was already a, a big star on the comedy circuit, but pretty much everyone else who didn't really have anything else going on they kind of bubbled up and they became bigger stars um and and godfrey actually did talk about the movie uh, a little bit on an appearance on vlad tv he said you know pretty much there weren't many opportunities for black actors to to get a role and so when something like this comes up this is kind of you, you know a lot of people will jump on it and a lot of people will get into the movie. It's kind of like what happened with uh, with Meteor Man back in the 90s. It's like whenever there's a black director or whenever there's a movie that ha like focuses on black people and there's like that cast and call, you'll pretty much get some of everybody in the movie. That's kind of how it is with the new Coming to America movie. Um, when, when you look at it, uh, Wesley Snipes in that movie, Lou Nell's in that movie, a lot of just a lot of everybody is in that movie. And in Meteor Man, some of everybody was in that. Uh, Luther Vandross was in it. Eddie Griffin was in it. Robert Townsend, of course, uh, starred in the movie. James Earl Jones, Bill Cosby. Um, Mar Marla Thomas, a.k.a. Uh, Florence from the Jeff Jeffersons. Like, um, so when, whenever these black movies pop up, you'll always see just a collection of talent. And in this case, it was a collection, kind of a mixture of people who would go on to do bigger things. Uh, Monique's won an Oscar. D.L. Hughley has a, a nationally syndicated radio show. Um, Kevin Hart has become the biggest name in comedy today. Um, you So there were people who were bubbling up. Monique, obviously she had the Parkers before this, but she really you know, go on and expand herself and get that Oscar for Precious. So, like I said, a lot of talent in the movie, but, yeah, it, it's it's one that I, I'm not going to go back to you again anytime soon. Maybe, you know, in, in another year or two, I might check out Soul Plane again, but nah, not, not too often. And this movie was also a big box office flop, but the reason is, it's not just because it's not a very good movie. It's also because this is one of the most heavily bootlegged movies of all time. Like, honest to God, I have never seen, like, a actual official DVD or Blu-ray case for Soul Plane. Like, every Soul time I've watched Soul Plane before I've watched it on Netflix, uh, every single time it's been a bootleg. There have been bad cop bootleg copies that I've seen. There have been good bootleg copies that I've seen. But... It's bootleg, and and Kevin Hart in a in a podcast interview he even said like, look, on the streets the movie made like forty million dollars, and at the premiere of Soul Plane, people were coming up and having him autograph their bootleg DVD copies, and so that's another reason why this movie didn't make any money is because it's like, dog, everybody had this movie, everybody had it on the street, so what? Why are we even releasing it on Blu-ray? Like, honestly, I didn't even know that there were, like, opening credits to it or an opening, like, credit sequence. Like, I had never seen that before until today, until I watched it again. So, yeah, Soul Plane, if you're a Kevin Hart fan and want to see one of his early starring roles, um, go ahead, check this out. Also, check out Paper Soldiers. Um, yeah, Kevin Hart, he, he did... You know, he, he bubbled up once in the early part of the 2000s, and then really after, I would say it was after Scary Movie 4, he bubbled up again, 
got big enough, and then I'm a grown little man happened, and then he kind of took off and became who he is now. So if you want to go back and take a look at his early parts of his career, this and Paper Soldiers are definitely a, uh, a good place to start. But yeah. That's it for the review of Soul Plane from 2004. Uh, thank you, everyone, for watching. Uh, make sure you are taking care of yourself. Make sure you're not doing anything stupid. Um, follow me on all the social medias that are in the description. And you have a great rest of your day. Peace.